a while back, General Motors made some claims which people were saying were bogus, would never happen. I personally was skeptical too. General Motors claimed they would increase the energy density of their Ultium batteries by 70%. Something ridiculous, right? Well, it looks like now they have acquired part of a company who have new technology, which actually may enable them to do what they claim they're going to do. It's fascinating stuff. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers and welcome back everyone else. So no one has said anything about this yet, probably because it only just happened within the last few days, but I am surprised to not see more reporting about this because it's actually a pretty big story. GM has acquired a stake in battery developer 1D Battery Sciences. These guys are in California. I looked at their website. To be honest, the website sucks, but the truth is the technology they're saying they have sounds uh, pretty incredible. It sounds like it is a potential pathway for General Motors to increase the energy density of their batteries by an enormous amount. I mean, I hesitate to use the phrase game changing, but it could potentially be that. It could be. It really, really could be. They've signed an agreement with this company. And the key reason here that they've done this is because they clearly think the technology that 1D have is going to enable them to achieve their goal, which obviously is to decrease the cost of Ultium cells significantly. Now, one way they can decrease the cost of the cells significantly is by increasing, right? Actually increasing energy density. I mean, if you increase energy density by say 50%, you can halve the size of the battery pack because by reducing the weight and simultaneously increasing energy density, it's actually a dual benefit. So this is actually big news. The potential use of 1D's silicon technology in the car makers Ultium batteries of course, is what's going to happen. I mean, clearly GM claim that's that they're going to work. But the thing is here, I mean, realistically, GM don't have a real good track record with some of their uh, joint ventures, should we say? Nikola, ring any bells? Yeah, yeah. Well, who knows though? Maybe this could be a really good one. 1D has announced GM's financial participation in the wake of its completed cease financing round, which raised 25 million US dollars, according to the company. In addition to GM, Volta Energy Technologies is one of the Series C investors. Unfortunately, we don't know exactly how much money GM has invested into this company. We don't know how much money anyone invested, but we know that GM is an investor and does clearly believe this technology will help them to actually achieve their Ultium goals. In addition to the financial aspects of the collaboration, there will be a development cooperation with GM. The basis for this is a manufacturing process patented by 1D called Sinanode. At the core of the approach are silicon nanowires that are fused directly into graphite powder in the anode. Both 1D and GM have said that the collaboration on silicon anode technology is believed to be the first of its kind between two United States companies. This is pretty significant if you look at it from that perspective, right? GM designed Ultium to be a supremely flexible platform so we can continuously improve our cells as a battery technology advances, said Kent Helfrich, GM's CTO, Vice President of GM Research and Development, and President of GM Ventures. Our collaboration with 1D will focus on efforts to continue advancements in EV range, performance, and cost. And realistically, GM, they have to do this. They're claiming they're going to decrease their prices of their EVs over time, particularly batteries. But they're saying the way they're going to do this, right, bring down the cost of electric cars for everyone to own is by bringing down the cost of batteries. That's the biggest cost for an EV, the, ba the battery pack cost, right? So GM claim, well, promise investors and the general public and car buyers that the price of their cars will be at a certain rate. I mean, 30,000 US dollars for the Equinox EV. That's a pretty decent, that's an amazing price, actually. But GM, in order to make a profit from these cars, which I don't think they will for at least the next couple of years, but in order to make a profit long term, they have to do something like this. So how are they actually going to do it? Well, 1D hopes to accomplish this through a new manufacturing process for building silicon graphite anodes called Sinanode. The technology offers room for customization in both graphite, natural or synthetic, and electrode coating, wet or dry. 1D claims that energy density can be tripled thanks to silicon nanowires or 
on commercially available graphite powder while halving the cost per kilowatt hour. I find it hard to believe these claims, but if they, even if they're half true, then this is the answer for General Motors, even if they're just half true. If they're 100% true, this unquestionably is an absolute game changer. There is no understating that fact. That is an understatement, what I just said. There's no overstating that fact. It is a game changer if their claims are true. If, and that's a big if. Oh, we're going to find out over the next few years. I'm going to bring you guys more news on this story, try and find out as much as I can to find out what the reality is behind this battery technology. Because if it's as good as 1D says it is, then it's staggeringly incredible. I mean, these results, if 1D is correct, would absolutely provide GM with a way to manufacture EVs at a price lower than the cost of gasoline-powered vehicles. That would be crazy. In addition, the Cena node method is said to be seamless to existing manufacturing processes. So this is the big key here, right? Well, the fact that 1D is saying that the Cena node process can be applied to GM's current manufacturing techniques pretty easily. Obviously, commercialization of battery technologies is the, the problem. And there's videos all over YouTube saying, this is the next battery, this is the next battery, this is the next battery. They're all wonderful stuff. But it's, the problem is when they go to commercialize them, they find out, ah, oh, it's too expensive. Oh, it doesn't last long enough. Some key reason. So commercialization is the big key here. And 1D is saying pretty, they should be able to pretty easily commercialize this technology. In October 2021, the battery developer announced it would build an initial pilot manufacturing facility in Moses Lake, Washington State, and invite OEMs there to adapt and optimize the silicon graphite anodes for use in their future lithium-ion electric batteries. 1D Battery Science has previously operated under the company name 1D Material. In 2013, the company acquired NanoSys NanoY Technologies. It now holds over 240 issued patents in the field of anode production and battery design. That's a lot of patents. The developer shares 1D Battery Sciences is headquartered in Palo Alto, California. So basically it's you know, very close to Tesla. So it's interesting that Tesla hadn't agreed to a deal here. I wonder why they hadn't looked at this technology. Maybe they had looked at it and decided that it wouldn't work for them. I'm not sure. It's kind of a, a really intriguing question though as to why Tesla didn't act on this. However, the company wants to establish licensing its Sinanode technology to industrial partners as its main business model. So it appears as though GM is licensing this technology and then obviously buying a percentage of the company in order to basically shore up this relationship. 1D says it will use the funds from the latest round of financing to continue research and development, advance pilot production, and attract OEMs and battery manufacturers as customers through licensed production partners. From day one, 1D has aimed to simplify silicon as the means to a completely new era of EVs. We believe that the winners of the EV race will be those who can effectively add more silicon to the battery cell in a way that doesn't disrupt existing supply chains and processes, said Vincent Pluvenage, CEO of 1D. We're thrilled to collaborate with General Motors on our shared goal of accelerating mass EV adoption. Now, I'm sure you all know, you're probably thinking it right now, but doesn't silicon, isn't there problems with dendrites? You know, isn't, isn't using silicon in batteries. Isn't that one of the key issues, the longevity of the batteries? Yes, it is. That's correct. It sounds to me, looking at Senior Node's website, that they have an interesting process here. They say the silicon, that silicon stores 10 times the energy of graphite, which is obviously correct. Using proprietary C-Lane, they infuse silicon nanowires into the graphite, supercharging it. So they're just using nanowires of silicon in the graphite, which may solve that problem with dendrites. They say the silicon nanowires fill the surface and then in the internal pores of the graphite, making the silicon accessible to the lithium ions. By eliminating the issues of silicon expansion and stability by putting it in the graphite, Cena node unlocks silicon's full potential. And then when it comes to the anode, they also have something there which is interesting. With the infused silicon evenly distributed and permanently embedded into the graphite, the silicon nanowires have an available reversible capacity of 3,250 milliamp hours per gram and a lower cost per kilowatt hour than graphite alone. 
Synanode technology allows wet or dry electrode coating, offering further cost reductions. There's the second step, right? There's the part that Tesla's using now. They're using dry electrode coating. I mean, obviously Tesla went and bought Maxwell Technologies for what was it, 325 million US dollars years ago in order to basically just use the dry electrode coating technology they had. One day you're saying this works with these batteries as well. Now, why does dry electrode coating matter? Well, basically it, it means you take a, an additional step of having a wet slurry. You take that out of the process. You don't have to have all the facilities, the drying, the drying racks, everything else. It massively simplifies the process and therefore significantly reduces the cost. Therefore, this battery will potentially change the situation and the game, which has to happen for General Motors. Otherwise, they have no, there's no way they can build Ultium cells as they are today, put them in cars and sell those cars for the prices they're quoting. That's just not going to work long term. It's, it's ridiculous that anyone even believes that that's possible. But with this technology, these two processes could put General Motors in position to compete with Tesla. It's very possible. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.